Jasmine, it's a pleasure to be interviewing you again. Welcome to Podcasting Made Simple. Thank you. I am so happy to be back for part two. It is an honor. I think we created magic last time, and so I hope we have a little bit of the same alchemy this time. I certainly hope so, and I believe we yeah. will. You know, it's funny. Today, I have to share something. I was getting caught up on all things Jasmine Star today, and I went for a run, and that's a great time to listen to podcasts. So what I was doing is, because I was focusing on running, is I'd finish an episode, and i just scroll down, because I wanted to hear like a variety of like today's Jasmine Star a year ago okay, when okay, we started, okay. right? So I was scrolling through, I clicked on one and I just keep on running and I'm, I'm not like the most athletic person. So I need to focus <laughs> on my footing while I'm okay. running. Unlike most people like, so I'm, I'm focused on that. And I know where you say this was a conversation I had with Alex Sanfilippo and I about fell. Like I like almost lost my footing. Like what? <laughs> um, anyway, I, I guess I, I remember this now, but you and your team had reposted yeah, the, the we last episode we did together. Yeah, we were because we thought it was really good. It was really helpful. You're a phenomenal interviewer, and I wanted Thank to make you. sure that Thank we you. shared the conversation. So, yeah. And I have no bloody knees to show for today. I kept my footing, and here we are. So, it, thank you for that. That was like one of my claim to fame. So, anyway, I'm... I'm, I'm excited today to talk to you in, instead of last time, which we happen to talk social media yes. and learning how to implement that into a business. But today we're going to be talking about podcasting. Mm -hmm. You've done exceptionally well in the podcasting space. And I just want to talk to you about your experience on both sides of the mic. So as a podcast guest and as a podcast host. And so I'm excited to dive in that today. And the first thing I want to ask is just the, the Jasmine Star Show. Can you talk about why you decided to start this in the first place? Like what was the reason behind it? I'm going to probably give an answer that most people don't know of and may or may not agree with is just that everything in my life to that point, we launched in late October, 2019 and everything up to that point became very strategic within the business and I missed and I craved a creative outlet where there were no rules. There were no expectations. And I started realizing there was like an intersection. It was an inflection point for me is that even though I create visual content and I teach others how to do it, I realized that I was doing the most consuming by way of podcast. And I realized that it was one area in my business where I was wildly underrepresented. And so I thought to myself after like probably two years of saying, I'm going to do a podcast and doing a podcast. And I couldn't find the why behind it. Like what was the reason? What was the strategy with all my time being a stretch? It is why am I going to add something more to my plate? And it wasn't until I gave myself the permission to say, what if there wasn't a strategy? What if you did it because you loved it and you wanted to serve people the way that you were being served? And having that as mentality going in was so freeing because I'm like, I don't have to hit a metric. I don't have to be in a recommended podcast. I don't have to be top charts. I get to do this because I can. And that was power for me. That's so cool to hear. So you were a podcast listener before you were a podcast Years host, and then. years and I, years of listening to podcasts. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I love that. that. That's the same story for me. I remember the first time someone told me what a podcast was. I was like, that sounds stupid, but I'm going to listen to one because I'm you know, all into exploring things. And I fell in love like instant, like first podcast. I'm like, this is the coolest Absolutely. thing ever. Um, but that's, that's really cool to hear. I, I was wondering, were you a guest on shows before you started one as well? Or did you not do any podcast guesting um, either? If it was, it was infrequent. Like nothing starts, okay. you know, nothing like jars my memory. is like, oh yeah, I built it into my marketing plan where I was a guest once a month. Not at all. I think that just by creating the content, it was speckled. I wouldn't say that I started my podcast having never been a guest, but it wasn't enough for me to say, yeah, I was a regular guest on podcast. Not necessarily. Right. Right. Okay. Now, I was just interested in knowing that. We'll get back to some podcast guesting stuff in a little bit because I know it became more part Absolutely. of the strategy. But when you went to launch, I actually went and listened to your first episode. You, you talked about why podcasting was the last thing you wanted to add to your business. Yeah. It was a really beautiful episode. Thank and I encourage you. people to go back and check Thank that out. You. I'll definitely link to it and all that. Um, but how long did it take you to actually go from being a listener and deciding, oh, I think I want a podcast to launching it? Like, was that a long journey for you? Well, listener to making the decision to start, I would probably say like three years at minimum. So I'm going to go back and give a shout out to a gentleman by the name of Ira Glass, host of This American Life on NPR. And my, he was my, he was, he was my boyfriend at the time. My boyfriend, who's now my husband, so I get to refer to him in both contexts as praise <laughs> God. Uh, my boyfriend at the time That's knew nice. that I'm just obsessed. I'm smitten with storytelling. And Ira Glass is such a powerful storyteller and he does it strictly on audio and it was streamed by way of the radio um, here in Los Angeles. And it's based out of Chicago. 
Ira Glass was doing a national tour where he was recording a live podcast at UCLA, which is my former law school. So we bought tickets to Royce Hall and we watched Ira Glass produce a podcast in real time with real music, mixing his own. And it was the most powerful, creative, artistic, most beautiful thing that I had experienced watching human to human. And the it was kind of like watching a tightrope walker. Like, is he going to make it to the end of the episode? How is it gonna go? And it was so, Cool. And I thought to myself, I could never do that. I can never do that. And so what happens is what you say is true. If you say you could never do something, you're right. And if you say you could try to do something, you're right then too. And so years of listening and consuming podcasts, when I finally made the decision to launch the podcast that happened in about July, August of 2019, and we launched in late October, 2019. So when we, when I decided, but that's my personality, when I decide something, it's go, all systems go do it the scrappiest way humanly possible. And then I give myself the freedom. Like I, I don't care to be top charts. I don't, I have nobody's metrics. Like I just want to get it out. And I think that of course, like, you know me, I'm like, well, the minute I decide I'm going to do it, can I gather a small group of people to help extend the message? And so we had like this like early listenership and I'm like, do you want to be part of like our launch crew? gave people early access to some of the podcast recordings. I think I had recorded six in advance to the launch. And I was like, if you're a part of this community, you get to listen to all of them. You get to know how to promote the podcast, created a small group of people to become evangelists. And then we were off to the races. I love that. And again, going back to that very first episode you did, if anyone's wondering how you just kind of ready, fire, aim, uh, go back and, and listen to that. <laughs> people kind of hear it. You just kind of, you jump into stuff. And I respect it so much the way that you just kind of have this feeling that you know you're supposed to do something and you just jump into mm -hmm. it. So um, love that part about you. To, to keep this moving on, I was wondering though, did, when you started, did you make any sort of commitment to yourself before you'd allow yourself to stop? And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is if you decided, I hate this, it's just not working, it's too much work, mm -hmm. did you give yourself a set time where you said, I'm going to do this for X episodes or X days or years or months, whatever, right? Before you'd stop, mm -hmm. or did that never hit the, across the table it for never, you? Like it never, it's my personality. It never crossed the table for me. I think, however, looking back, a kind thing I could have done for myself is invited myself the permission to have a series or episodics to where I can say, I'm gonna do a season and I get to determine what the season is. Is it 10 episodes? Is it 100 episodes? I think it would be good to kind of take inventory, but I know my personality. I would give myself a reason not to hop back in. That's my personality. I always joke and people are offended by this, but I'm like, my daddy raised a quitter. Alex, I'm happy. I, 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 was, I was raised a quitter and it drives my husband crazy because he was raised the complete opposite. But my dad came to this country from Mexico and he said that he was forced to do so many things he didn't want to do so his family could survive and thrive. And his whole goal was to simply say, I'm not going to make my children do anything they don't want to do. So my whole life, Alex, it was like, you don't like soccer? Quit. You don't want to read? Don't do it. Like, it was kind of like this thing. And so I kind of got to this point in my life to where I'm just like, if I don't want to do it, I'm going to quit. So as an adult, if I actually set a strategy and I said, this is a creative outlet, well, then don't have any expectations. My, my goal was to post one episode and we keep on going. And to this day, we're now up to two or three episodes a week. I love that. That's so cool. Anyway, I don't know if anyone else wants to take the advice of just quit you know, <laughs> like, like that. But I think that, uh, I think that obviously your determination, understanding this is a form of content that you just didn't have yes. that you wanted, just kept that drive going. Yes. Along the way, early on, midway through, and even where you are today with the show, which we'll get into in a minute here, what has been the most difficult part for you? Like what, what has been like the struggle on the way for you or maybe even members of your team? Like what do you find in podcasting be the difficult part? is showing up on days when I don't want to show up. You know, creating content is, um, it's heavy lifting. It's like going to the gym, you know? We like the results of going to the gym. Like we like when our pants fit a little better and we like when we, you know, feel a little trim as we go into the you know, summer seasons. Um, we like that, but actually doing the discipline, it's just, sometimes it feels like work. And uh, due to my schedule, I batch content. So today is a, guest podcast batching content kind of day. So I am locked in my office for eight hours and I do podcast after podcast after podcast after podcast. And 
as a guest, it's a different exertion of energy. There's less prep time. I'm in response. But as I am a host, I have to come correct, Alex. Like I have to do so much research before. I have to read books and press kits and I got to do my research beforehand. It is so much work. And some days, Alex, I don't want to do the work. I'm tired. But I have come to know and believe that my business has never been built on motivation. If my business was built on motivation or inspiration, I wouldn't be in business. My business has been built on discipline. I can do things I don't want to do to get the results I want. And I think that as business owners, we just need to have like that real, actually, I'm going to say as podcasters, you need to have that real moment. You need to have that real moment. It's not going to be a perpetual state of creative content creation and inspiration and butterflies and fairies. It's a discipline. And I'm really proud of the way that the team has showed up as a form of discipline. We get to reap the rewards on the back of discipline. I love that. I mean, discipline is like my middle name, I like to think. So that's why we I get along, Alex. That. That's why, I mean, that's why I mean, it takes it takes a, a crazy to know a crazy. So, yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. I didn't know we were crazy. But that's, <laughs> that's good that I have, we now have that freedom to share that. So I, I want to I want to shift gears and talk growth a little bit. And then we're going to get into some podcast guesting stuff yeah. because you just did allude to it's much more work on today, my side of the mic yes. and on, then on, then on your side of the mic today, right? Being Correct. a host versus a guest. And I want to get into that. But first, I want to talk about your show because you did mention that you didn't necessarily care about the downloads, the subscribers, mm-hmm. any of that. Like you didn't really care about that. But I do know that since launch, launching, your show now has millions mm-hmm. of, of views, listens, downloads, all that, right? What have you done to grow the show to that level? I was consistent. Like, I want to tell you, Alex, that there is some magic to it. I want to tell you that we had an ad strategy. We've never run ads to the podcast. I think that we got to a point where, like, maybe we should test it because I hear other podcasters are having really great results. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try it. But up until this point, at the time of this recording, we haven't run ads to the podcast. And I've always maintained there is, honestly, Alex, if I had another three hours in my day, I would build a social media platform for podcasting. Discoverability for podcast is, you know, negative 1%. How do you actually search podcasts? You don't. Podcast hosts actually have to have blog posts to index for SEO so people can search for content and then hopefully you randomly find a podcast. But if you were going to like Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, how are you finding topics that you really want to get into that you know are specific for that thing? Oftentimes what I've discovered is that people have to search by way of a host, I mean, by, excuse me, by way of like a an industry professional or a thought leader. So if I wanted to learn about, say, branding, I would have to go to, say, Apple, type in Seth Godin, and see a list of podcasts that he might have been a guest on. And then what? I'm just going to search aimlessly? There isn't a way for us. Like, when I send an episode to a friend, I have to do it somewhat archaically. Let me get the link and then text it. Why not tag? Why not share? Why not be able to give insights? It's, it's crazy to me that Spotify doesn't have reviews the way that Apple does. And so there isn't like a mechanism in which we can promote other podcasts organically. And so how have we grown the podcast up into now? I post and thankfully people share. It has been organic up until this point. That's really cool. I'm actually glad to hear that. Sometimes I talk to people and they've got like, well, I spent 30 grand on ads last month. I'm like, ooh, not everyone can do that. Yeah. You know, like, so it's really cool to hear the fact that what you alluded to is being consistent and sharing it. Now, I, I do want to talk about that marketing side of sharing it because mm-hmm. when I follow you on social media, I don't see you posting episodes all the time. Like, that's not just, you're not always like, here's an episode, no. here's a new episode dropped, here's an episode dropped. What is working for you from a marketing standpoint that's made it interesting for people to actually not only decide, oh, cool. I want to subscribe to this podcast, but I'm going to keep on listening to it. Like what has worked for you in that, in that route? Um, doing a face to camera story. So oftentimes what, what, what we would do is like, so I'm interviewing somebody on zoom and then, so we're doing it via video. And so I can get a video clip of that person sharing like a less than 15 second, powerful piece of impact. Then I have like an audio file, which is just their picture. And then like a little audio wave file of them saying like they're less than 15 seconds. And that's pretty cool. I still test with that, but every podcast host does it. It's really hard to stick out. And oftentimes more than 70, I believe it's more than 75% of people consume social media without audio which is why it's really important to have like subtitles on your stories and so if you have like an audio file where you're sharing something that you had said or a guest had said and they're n- and it, it doesn't have subtitles or captions in it there's a good chance people are not even going to hear what it is 
The thing I've noticed is if I do a two camera story and then I add some sort of title or graphic of the host or with the topic or even add captions by way of the Instagram caption feature and then a link to the pod- podcast, that has been good. And then including CTAs, very hard call to actions of like, hey, if you really appreciate this episode, be sure to tax to tag Alex and myself on social media. We want to reach out and connect. And the average Instagram uh, account has around 300 followers. And if they posted a story and about 2% of followers are actually seeing stories, it's a really small amount, but the more people share, the more that 2% is amplified across all of your listeners, if they're willing to share. But it's been, it's, it's listener sharing. It really is listener sharing. Yeah, the number one way podcasts still grow. I was just at a conference and they talked about this. The number one way podcasts getting discovered and growing is all through just organic sharing. Exactly. Of I like this show. Exactly. You should listen to it because exactly. you're my friend, right? Exactly. More so than any of the, the search engines don't really. And one do of the things that I, I really like, I want to make sure that it becomes more of a discipline is I want to repurpose as many stories where people are sharing the podcast. Now, I have to be very careful that you know somebody will like repurpose a podcast graphic or they'll put like they like the the photo of my podcast, this is the Jasmine Star Show. That's great, but I can't keep on repurposing the same thing because it comes null and void. The best thing that I've noticed is like when I repurpose stories of people listening to the podcast, doing whatever it is they do. They're making rice and beans. They're, they're watching their kids in swim lessons. They're sitting in traffic or whatever the case may be. I've noticed that those really resonate with people and then I get to insert myself in their story and showcase, hey, other people are sharing and it encourages other people to share with what they are doing as they listen. I think that that's been pretty powerful. That's great. That's really sound advice right there because something I've noticed is a lot of us podcast hosts, myself included in this at times, is we just share the the ad yes. more or less. Yes. It's a static image. Yes. It's like, listen to this. We yes. post it on our feed, yes. post it on our story, but it's not human no. and it doesn't feel human and no one... No one is scrolling through social media and like, ooh, I want to be sold to listen right. to this podcast. <laughs> right. But if they're like, hey, I'm, I'm in traffic, I'm not moving, I'm scrolling through my phone. Don't lie, everyone who's watching and listening, you do it. And so they're scrolling through their phone like, oh, someone's in traffic as well. And they're listening to Jasmine Star Show. Right. I should listen to Jasmine Star, Star right. Show, right? Like that's the type of thing that actually works and happens. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes uh, when people are posting their takeaways from it, they might like add text. Like I learned these three things. And then when I repurpose the story and somebody else wants to know those three things, it empowers them to click on the link and go listen to the episode. So good. So now I'm wondering w- with your show, do you have any sort of call to action in it that converts people into leads for social curator? Oh, or there, is, form of there is a CTA in every episode. That is, it is right. like come hell or high water, there is a CTA. Because at the time of this recording, the podcast hasn't been monetized and it's been very strategic for me because, well, I wanted it to be a creative venture. I wanted to see how much of a lead generator it would be for the Jasmine Star brand and for a social curator. And I just referred to myself in third person, but they are two different lists and two different offerings. So we always do create a distinction. Every episode has a CTA and more often than not, we have, goodness gracious, well over 25 Uh, opt-ins or freebies or leads. And so the content that we're creating on the podcast is streamlined around small business owners, specifically getting more followers, turning them into leads and getting sales. So a lot of our offers and a lot of the topics that we're talking about fall into like one of those 25 opt-ins. So there's going to be like everything from, you know, I did start a micro podcast series around like web three crypto. Um, It's been very interesting for me. And I believe, I believe, I don't know how, Alex, but I believe that I will be able to create a line of synergy between Web3 and what it means for business owners. But far be it for me to come out at some point two years from now and be like, so I'm now an expert. And I'm like, I actually want to share my journey. And I'm not saying that people had a good response to the crypto series. More often than not, like my own podcast producer, I'm about to spill the tea. She was like, Jasmine, we should not keep, we, could, we should not have these episodes. This is not your lane. This is not what people are listening to. Look at the stats. And I said, number one, I agree and I hear you, but I am choosing actively to ignore it because it's my podcast and it's free. If people don't want to listen to it, they don't have to. For me, this is going to be a mode and a mechanism to show the messy middle, to show how one innovates in business and to show and prove to people that I've been doing the work for years. And so the happy medium that we came to was that we guarantee two podcast episodes a week. If I happen to do a third, I get to choose. Is it going to be crypto based? Is it going to be something else? But that third one is a place of magic that still remains my cup of tea. If somebody doesn't want to listen to it, that's totally cool. I'm fine with it. But we created an opt-in specifically for that. We wanted a very clear CTA to start building out a different segment of listeners. 
So real quick here with your producer, next time you're in some sort of uh, disagreement or something like that, you should refer to yourself in the third person. I think. Oh. Um, she, would say, <laughs> she would Jasmine kill Star, me. She would kill Jasmine me. Jasmine Starr doesn't she like it. She would kill me. That's the thing about Christy is that Christy is so honest with me, like brutally honest. She will be like, I'm sorry Jasmine Starr doesn't like it, but Christy Smith is not here for it. So Christy's telling Jasmine to stuff it. <laughs> I love it. That's great. So I know you have like a lot, you meet, you're really good about meeting your dream customer or client where they're at. And that's mm-hmm. something I've always really respect about you. You're on all the platforms and you really just hone in on and meet them where they are, how they like to be met. So you're getting leads from everywhere. How do your podcast leads, not from a quantity standpoint, but from a quality I'm standpoint, so glad how you do added that compare? qualifier, Alex. I'm so glad you added that well, qualifier because- Yes, and you want to explain why, uh, you can explain why. Yeah, okay. So this is, this is not for people who have queasy stomachs. Getting a lead from a podcast is so hard. It is so hard. Podcasts grow so slow. Podcast is long form content that most of the time when you baked in a CTA, it's closer to the end. So people will start a podcast and maybe get through halfway. Not everybody finishes it. So if not everybody's finishing it, they're not actually hearing the CTA. So the leads we get from our podcast, so we, we create links specific to leads that are different for the podcast so we can track the podcast leads through their journey. So we get the least amount of leads from the podcast by a long shot, the least amount of leads. They are the most qualified. They convert really well, but we've been tracking LTV. Lifetime value of that customer is much higher. It's like these people have gone so deep. They have a podcast listener has already made the decision to buy. So when they buy, they're down there. It's a different buyer. It's a different experience. I believe that the leads that come by way of the Jazz and Star podcast are gangsters. They're different. They're at different levels with their business. They're fully committed. They catch the vision and they don't have to be sold. It's like, man, that's a dream, but it is work to get, to get them to convert. It's just a long game. It's very different. Yeah, I, I love that you shared that though, because it, it again shows the fact that listeners are for, to a podcast are just really high quality. I think that the reason for that is because of the type of content that it is. Absolutely. And so, like to to me, it's not any different when someone's listening to you on a podcast, whether you're a guest or a host. It's like they're sitting in seats and watching you on a stage. You have their undivided attention. Now they might be driving or working out or running like me, right? They're doing something, but they're listening to you and giving that attention. And nothing against social media, because obviously, Jasmine, you're like the queen of it, and you know how powerful it is. But people can scroll by pretty quick. They might watch a 60-second video or two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. But they're going to scroll by. But when they listen to you Mm -hmm. for 30, 45 minutes, Mm -hmm. they can really decide, hey, do I know, like, and trust this person? Mm -hmm. Like, they have that opportunity to do that. And not to forsake, like, there's just two entirely different strategies. I don't think that one is better than the other. But far be I mean, let's just be real. If we're going to have somebody listen to a 43-minute podcast, they're not going to go from zero to 100. They're just not. The thing that I've noticed is that social media is really great in micro doses of like a 15 second reel or a one minute video or a 10 minute Instagram live. And this person's like, man, 10 minutes, I got value. I think I'm ready to commit to the podcast in a 20, 30, 40, 60 minute format. I think that social media primes the podcast listener. The podcast doesn't necessarily prime to follow on social. That's well said. I love that. So I want to shift gears here. So we've talked about your your podcast, The Jasmine Star Show, and now I want to talk about your guesting experience. Cool. So you started the show. I'm guessing you developed some sort of strategy to to be on podcasts as well. Um, first off, oh my are, God, are you, Alex, is you that think a the most strategy? of me? You think the most of me? You think the most of me? Like you probably I, I do. Some don't don't ruin strategy. this, Jasmine. Don't ruin this. I, I'm gonna ruin. I'm gonna pop that. Like I'm gonna pop that like illusion real quick. I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, set out to be like, I'm going to be a guest on these many podcasts. So, uh, you know, obviously you're listening to this podcast. So you'd be primed to listen to another podcast. It was nothing. It was zero like that. I was just kind of like, do I want to talk about business and do I want to help other people? Yeah. And you have a platform to do it. And the crazy thing is, is in the beginning, I, nobody was really asking me to be on podcast. So I said yes to every podcast. I didn't ask for how many downloads, how many listens are you getting? I was like, sure, let's go. And it was the best, it was the best investment of my time because it kind of sucked in the beginning. I couldn't find getting to the point, specifically in audio. Audio is where the gangsters dwell because you cannot mask emotion. You can't mask BS. You can mask it a lot on social. 
you can add cutaways and layers and filters and fake eyelashes. I mean, no, no tea, no shade. I got my fake eyelashes on today. I get the game on visual, but when it comes to audio, people aren't there to mess around. Get to the point in the quickest way possible. Give actionable steps. And it isn't enough to be like, and you know, I was like, Ugh. what does that mean? There is no, Ugh. and then you can add a graphic, an emoji or a GIF to articulate that emotion. I was just Ugh. means nothing in audio. You better find your words, find them quick. So I was able to sharpen my teeth when it came to podcasting early on, get to the point, and then it's so crazy. Podcast hosts listen to other podcasts, and it seemed like I started off in the very small, small, small of podcast, which opened the doors to be on peers podcast of the of those listeners so it's kind of similar circles and then slowly the listenership circles got much bigger so now i'm at a position to say i can't take every invitation so i am at a point of like where do i go to maximize my time so now when i'm invited it's how many downloads what is expected how long what's expectations but starting then i said yes to everything and it paid off very cool. I love hearing that, that just kind of your journey of it. My heart's a little bit broken. I assume you had some <laughs> crazy strategy along the way, but, uh, but I love it. The strategy and I will is say, say yes. I went back, That's it. That's my strategy. Say yes, right. I, I went back and listened to some of the earliest episodes that you were a guest on I could find. And I have to say, you, you talk fast now, but you talked so fast, like even faster <laughs> back then. You're saying more like there's no, I was like, is she breathing? Like I want to be like, Jasmine, stop. But you've, you've just, as you said, you've honed your craft. You've gotten really good at it. So just wondering, so now you, you obviously, you're, you're a little bit, have to be a little bit pickier about which mm -hmm. podcast you go on. And that's obviously not a reflection on what you think of the host. It's no, just, no. you have to protect your time. Right. Um, and I understand that. And I think everyone, everyone does who's listening as well. Uh, but I'm wondering what, what does that do for your show or for your, your brand? Like what, what does guesting do for you right now? Well, guess, guesting is a great mechanism to have somebody else co-sign. It's true. It's a brand extension. Because um, people who are listening to a podcast, they really do trust the podcast host. And so the podcast host becomes uh, a lens in which somebody is viewing. Because they think, well, if Alex is ringing Jasmine on the show, and I really like Alex, and I think that he knows how to vet guests, my time is still protected. So a podcast host is a gatekeeper of someone's time and taste and trajectory. So they're already co-signing. By being a guest, they're already co-signing on what it is that you do. And oftentimes podcast hosts talk so much better about you, your business, your aspirations, your passions than you ever could. So it's kind of just like a shoe in to get in, talk about what you're passionate about and other people will help you, hype you up and help you out. You know, I always talk about how as a podcast host, I am the wall between my guest and the listeners. And because mm -hmm. I always have people reach out and they're like, hey, I had a really bad guest on the show. Like I tried to, to vet them. I just didn't realize how they'd be, should I still post the episode? My answer is always no, no absolutely good, not. Because, good, good. Because you're going to lose the trust that your, your yes. audience has in you. So you've yes. got to protect that. Absolutely. And yeah, so not, can't say yes to everybody. You've got to make sure that you really do a good job vetting your guests so that you're taking them the journey you want them to go on. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to real quick, you're, you being a guest on podcasts, something really popular that hosts ask about is, will the guest share the episode? Or are they going mm. to, to email it out to everybody? Are they going to link to it from their website? Like all these things get brought up all the time. What mm -hmm. are your thoughts on that? And what's your strategy? So when you're a guest, are you always sharing? Are you always doing these things? Or do you have some sort of idea behind how this should work and the expectation host should have? Well, I, I never have any expectation that I, as a host, will have a guest who will share. I have zero expectation. And so I want the same to be reciprocated. I don't expect anything and I don't want a host to expect anything. And I feel like it's a little bit of an outlier. Like my opinion means jack squat because I know that I am a podcast guest at minimum six podcast, six podcasts a week. I can't possibly share every single podcast because then all of a sudden I'm linking out to a thousand different things in a thousand different ways. My job as, as owner of my social accounts is to be the wall is to say like, this is gonna be a really good investment of your time if you're particular about this topic. And then I have to be very careful that ideally, obviously, what I want is to build my listenership. The more that I keep on pointing out to like 10 different podcasts, there is analysis paralysis. People are like, well, I don't know which one to listen to. So I'm like, if you have to pick one, pick mine. Like, it's my account. And so, I mean, that's just like me being honest. Now, generally speaking, people aren't guesting that often so it is a lot of reciprocity. It is nice to share, but I don't have any expectation when I bring somebody on my podcast. I don't. Yeah, that's good to know. And, and I'm, I'm the same way. Either way, I'll do my best to share it. But sometimes there are certain days where I wake up and there's five different podcasts right. that, that I was on. And I'm like, well, 
it, it turns into spam. It's, it's, it's yes. kind of like, so I just find the one that I'm like, you know what, this is what my, my listeners need today. And I'll right. usually try to space out the others. I'm not on as many shows as you are. And that's, that's just where I'm at. So it like works good for me to kind of just space that out. But like some hosts are like, Hey, it came out today. You need to share it today. I'm like, I can't, it's not going right. to work that way. And mm-hmm. so I think the expectation just needs to be, Hey, it's my audience. I'm going to add value to the people that are trusting me today. Absolutely. And anything else is a bonus. Absolutely. I just think that that's the right mentality to have. Absolutely. So I want to go back to you as a host and a guest, because here's the thing. I realized when I was listening to some guesting slots you have, people have no filter with you. They will ask you anything. I mean, <laughs> I'm like listening to questions. I'm listening to questions hosts are asking you. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, wow, they must. Well, I here's, hope the thing, they really know her. here's the thing, Alex. Here's the thing, Alex. When people say before, you know, you know, there's always a conversation before they press record. And in case you yes. don't know, now, you know, for listeners who are like, they do. Absolutely. There's always the pre-roll. And people say, is there anything that we should not talk about? And every single time I say, I'm an open book. Ask me any question you'd like. And if the question is too much, I will tell you it's too much. So people are like carte blanche. And so I think the reason why I pop or I resonate as a guest is because I will answer. I, I don't think I've ever said I'm not answering that question. So why? Are, is that a warm up for, are you going to like come and ask for my social security number? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to do. That was the question. Way to ruin it. No, actually, I was just thinking, I didn't ask you, was there anywhere we couldn't go today? Like, I just hit record. Because you're so sweet and you're so polite. But like, honestly, ask any question. Like, I love it. I love feeling uncomfortable because it's so unexpected. And with audio, it's so unfiltered that people know, like, dang, she's being honest. Yeah. And, you know, I I think that that really is, that's been your brand when it comes to a podcast, though. So I think that people, Mm. obviously, who are going to interview, they listen to your show as well. You are just fully human and fully you every time you press record. I mean, I have not once listened to an episode. I listened to a bunch of them, especially today as I was running, right? I'm like listening to them. And not once was I like, she's trying to sound like she knows it all. Like you just are totally open with like, I don't really understand this or I don't really, I just learned this or I'm in the middle of this, like and all that. And that's great. And I think that it just gives people permission when they're going to have you on the show to kind of go the same route, right? Like she'll mm-hmm. just say honestly how, what she's thinking, how she's feeling. How important has that been in your podcasting journey, do you think, to just truly show up as yourself and be human? So powerful because we're, I, I, didn't, I didn't set out, but what has, what has transpired, what I've heard from listeners again and again is giving people the permission to ask exactly for what they want. I can't tell you how many podcasts where somebody asks a question and I'm like, what the heck? I don't even know what you're asking me. And so the, what I go to is, can you, ex, can you explain it like I'm five? Or can you ask that question like I'm in preschool? And, and, and people hear that coming from me and they're like, wait, what? Like, it's okay to ask that? Like, it is okay to be like, I have no idea what you just asked. And so sometimes they'll come up a lot of times, a lot of times, like, like it, I'm a self-taught entrepreneur. I have no business starting a business and yet I did and it ended up taking off and I know that I am here to serve people. But as far as like the mechanisms of like legit business when they're like, oh, so what's the LTV can't carry it over to the CPM, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I don't understand any of that. Like, what do you actually mean? And when they break it down in layman's terms, I was like, oh yeah, that, well, we got this, this, and this. I know what you're talking about. I actually don't know the actual mechanisms of it, but it was the same when I was a photographer. People are like, oh, I can't believe it was such shot in such high key, and what are the reasons? And she blurred this out, and I'm like, I don't know what they're saying. And they're like, oh, well, you lost all the blue in the color of the sky, to which I respond, oh, I know why I did it, it was with intention, and here's why. And I just think to each their own. May we all give each other the opportunity for us to say, I don't have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm confident enough in who I am to say it, because it gives other people permission in their lives in their lives, Alex, we're not even talking about business, in their lives to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. What power, what humility, because it's the people who admit their absolute truth that invite people into their orbit to pour into them. It is the know-it-alls, it is the, and we, have you ever been on a podcast where somebody's talking and you ask a question and they actually didn't a- understand the question, but they keep on talking as if they understood and you're like, you're lost in the weeds, son. You are lost in the weeds. And it's like, we all smell it, own it. People are so endeared to somebody who's like, oh, she didn't know. I knew that. She didn't know. So endeared to that. You know, what you talked about there is just transparency for a moment. It's just like being transparent, right? Like, I think that showing up that way is actually more difficult for people than to try to put on a facade of like, I'm this, right? And it's something I struggled with early on in, in podcasting. Like people started thinking I knew more than I did and I didn't mean for that to happen. So I started acting like I knew more than I did, right? Like, mm. which is a terrible, vicious cycle. And eventually I... I, I 
sat back and reflected. I'm like, no, no, I need to just be fully transparent. Like, it's better that way. But it's scary to do that. Like, it takes a level of, of confidence that, like, as you mentioned, like, that's not easy to do. What do you recommend to a podcast host or guest that's maybe struggling on either side of the mic with that confidence just to show up knowing what they know and just being fully transparent and honest about that? Well, it's, it's, it's a muscle. Your brain is a muscle. Your brain is identical to your calf, to your tricep, to your bicep. And when you work out a muscle, it gets stronger. And so now, see, you can't pretend you have no idea because you're listening to this conversation right now. So Alex just said, what do we do? So now, now you know. You totally know and you can't put a blind eye anymore to the fact that you have been struggling with the difficulty of admitting you don't know the answer, you don't know how to phrase the question, you feel misunderstood, or you're lost. I have been in the middle of a 15 minute conversation. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've sat here and pretended like I knew what it was talking about. Can we go back? And people are like, and I'm talking about in big fancy meetings in boardrooms and I've wasted too much of my life pretending and the person it robs is me. So as a podcast host or as a podcast guest, the strongest thing that you could do for your time and for your brand is to admit that you don't know what you don't know or make a joke of it. Be like, you know, I feel like pretending I knew what you're talking about. I actually don't. Is it possible that you could rephrase it? That is power. When you look at it like a tool of power, when you look at it like a sword and you're not running, you become a warrior of understanding the truth, veracity, humility, vulnerability of what it is to be human. And people respect that and they trust you more. I love that. Jasmine, this has been such a fun conversation today. I'm so thankful for your time. Before I let you go, do you have any final thoughts regarding being a podcast guest or host that you can share with us today? Yeah, don't wait so long to get a press kit. I didn't know that it would be helpful. I didn't know what a press kit was. I actually, somebody had said, okay, Jasmine, we want you on the podcast. Can you send us a press kit? And I'm like, ah, oh, sure, I'll get it to you. And then I was like, maybe if I just wait, they'll just kind of forget about it. Like, I mean, do you really need the podcast press kit? Like, I'm not out there really pitching myself. So I waited and then I invited somebody to come on my podcast and her press team, or I don't even know the fancy pants stuff. They're like, oh, her, it was like her PR. They sent me her press kit and I was like, oh, this is really nice. It's very helpful. And that's when I was like, hey, team, let's put it together. Let's go to Canva and let's whip something up. So uh, don't wait too long to get a press kit. It really does set you yourself up for success. Um, I'm going to be like a little shady. Ooh, okay, whatever. It's my truth. If you're going to send a gift to a podcast guest, send a gift that you think they would use, not swag from the podcast. Like, I'm so happy I have an oven mitt from that podcast, but I'm like, I'm not going to use it. Like the coffee mug, the tumbler, the notebook, the 18 pens. It's like, send something that's not like self-promotion that you hope would end up in somebody else's Instagram story. <laughs> like, it's just not, it's just not used in that capacity. And more than anything, one of the kindest, kindest things was somebody had said, I know your time is valuable and it's not, we can't compensate you for what it is, but we would like to make, it was I'm just gonna say what it was. It was a $50 donation to the charity of my choice and I was so moved by that. I was like, y'all are classy. That was really, really, really nice. And it doesn't have to be $50. It could be $20 to every charity can use a penny and a nickel. It's amazing what something small can do. And it just says a lot about who you are and what you stand for. I love it. Some great advice at the end, very practical. Thank you again, Jasmine. I really appreciate your time today. Alex, let's do this again. You're the best. Thank you. I appreciate you.